Welcome everybody. It's a wonderful morning. Welcome to all of you sitting here who came out in this frigid weather. And welcome to everybody on Zoom. Maybe cold out there, right? But it's warm in here, warm in our hearts. And we got some exercise shoveling snow, right? We some energy, that's the word for today. We used it during the week when we cleaned off our car, right? Did that again. So today we're going to talk about a different kind of energy. It's spirit-filled energy. So please rise and let's join together in the call to worship and turn in your hymnals to page 251, Flow Spirit Flow. You may be seated. Flow, spirit, flow, and all my fears release. Fill me with power and energy, and let my heart be strong. So today, we're here to talk un about unlimited Spirit-filled energy. And is Faith here? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Our daily reader for today is Faith Sertrell. If you want to come up, thank you. Good morning, Zoomers and people in the church. Happy New Year, Healthy New Year, and all that good stuff. The reading from today is Sunday, January 21st, and the word is energetic. The limitless energy of spirit flows through me. I smile as I watch children at play. Their boundless energy seems so natural, so effortless when I want to reclaim the same zeal and enthusiasm for myself. I remember these divine gifts are already within me. Centered in this awareness, I feel renewed vitality. As I take care of my family, 
move through my workday, enjoy time with their ones, or volunteer in my community, I en engage with all it I engage it all with enthusiasm and feel my energy build. If I feel my enthusiasm faltering, I don't despair. Instead, I pause for a moment to feel the quickening energy of spirit, the divine life and strength that are flowing through me. As I'm revitalized, the world feels anew. The world feels new. I shimmer with energy and go about doing all I feel called to do. From Colossians 1, 11, May you be made strength, strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. Have a great day. Thank you, Faith. You all know that I'm a retired biology teacher. So when I read a word like energy, you know, what immediately comes to mind is the definition I taught for years to the high school students. Energy is the ability to do work. You remember that one? And then you learn that there's two kinds of energy, right? Potential energy, the energy of position, which is what we've all got right now, right? Because we're sitting down, right? Except Paul, he's not only sitting down, but working with his hands. He's got some kinetic energy going on there. That's the energy of movement. Okay, remember all that stuff? You were probably hoping you'd never hear it again. All right, and then there's the biological definition. Anybody remember what the energy molecule is in all living systems? We have a special prize for you if you come up with the right answer. Anybody remember from high school? Raise your hand. That's where it takes place. Good, but that's not the molecule. What's the energy molecule? ATP. Do you remember that? No. It's made in the mitochondria, as Paul said, and I used to, uh, once I taught junior high school, and in the sixth grade, I used to sing, food and oxygen, food and oxygen enters the cell, through the cell membrane, goes to the mitochondria, where it makes the ATP, zap energy, zap energy, <laughs> and they never forgot it, those sixth graders. You just got to put it to a song. All right, so every cell in your body makes ATP all the time. Not just one mitochondria, but in the muscles, you could have as many as 2,000 mitochondria producing ATP so you can run and you can do whatever, you know, with all your muscles. So you make ATP your entire life. And when you stop making ATP, you're dead. It's that simple, right? But we now know that the ATP you make decreases as you get older. Decreases. And they think that's part, actually one of the causes of aging. So today, we're not talking about that kind of energy. We're talking about the limitless energy of spirit. And so even though the supply of energy molecules, ATP, may decrease as we get older, the good news is that God's supply never decreases. It's limitless. That's kind of scary because, you know, we like to say, hey, I just don't have the energy anymore. 
but I guess that's not true. <laughs> um, at any age, my body can be energized by the healing life of spirit within me. I need only to access that power and energy in my inner self. So, Ephesians 3, 16 through, um, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, tells us the following. Paul is writing this. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, and how high and how deep is the love of God. And to know this love of God and to know his love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. What a wonderful verse, right? God's purpose is to fill us with his fullness and to empower us to live the life that he has given to us. Now, we all know that sounds really good, right? But it's easier said than done. I don't know about you, but I very often say, I just don't have the energy to do this job. And then I, th I thought to myself, what do we really mean? What do I really mean <laughs> when I say that? I'm actually looking to rationalize an excuse, kind of, for not doing something. Maybe I'm afraid I'm going to fail. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm afraid I'm going to look stupid doing something I'm not that familiar with. We have a lot of fear. And so, so we sometimes don't want to stretch ourselves and begin to see things from a different perspective. We choose rather to stay in our comfort zone. I, I just want to share with you uh, the story of Moses and the burning bush. You all remember that, right? And, and we read it very often, right? But, but do you realize how many excuses Moses makes? He doesn't want to do the job. And I'm, I'm going to read those excuses. I think it's, this, it's kind of funny when, when you think about it, all those excuses. You know, we always hold him up as, you know, being this great guy, which he was, but he's terribly human, right? So he's at the burning bush, and God, and, and he knows it's holy ground. He takes his shoes off. He knows this is God speaking to him. And God says to him, I have seen the plight of my people, the Israelites, in Egypt and how they are enslaved and working so hard, and I want to set them free. And I want you to go and set them free. And what's the first thing Moses says? Right? He says, Who am I? To go to Pharaoh. Remember, he's a, a shepherd here in Midian. He used to live in Pharaoh's household, but then he killed an Egyptian and he ran, right? And he's happy now. He's comfortable. He's a shepherd. He married one of the uh, uh, women, Midianites. And he says, who am I to go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? We say that all the time. Oh, I'm not good at that. <laughs> I can't do that. 
Ask Joe. She's good. The words just come out. Right? Last week, when she was platforming, I thought, wow. She just speaks out of the abundance of her heart. It's beautiful, isn't it? Anyway, he, asked, he actually asked Scott that question. And what is God's answer? I will be with you. He still doesn't want to do the job. Question number two. He says, what if they ask me the name of the God who sent me to free the Israelites? What do I say then? You know? God says, tell them I am who I am. Question number three. Moses says, um, what if they don't believe me? You know, that failure thing. You know, it's like saying, you know, this is not for me. I don't have the energy for this job. You know, what if, what if they don't believe me? What if I look like an idiot talking to them? God gives him three tricks. I don't know if you remember about his hand uh, becoming leprosy, he gets leprosy on his hand and he puts it in his cloak and then there's another thing with the rod, the staff turning into a snake whatever, all this kind of magic stuff to give him confidence he's still not satisfied <laughs> next question is oh lord you know I don't speak well I'm not eloquent I said, you know, I got a stutter. You know, I, I don't think I'm the man for this job. Now God's getting a little annoyed, and he, uh, he says to Moses, who gave you your mouth? I love that. Who gave you your mouth? You know, if he asks you to do a job, he'll give you what you need. He is sufficient for ev all of our needs. He will provide, provide the energy, provide the words, everything. I love the last one. Do you all know the very last one? Thing that he says, which blew my mind when I read it years ago. I said, oh my gosh. You know what he says to God at the very end? Number five. God Pick somebody else. That's the last thing he says. Now, if I were God, I would have just zapped him with a lightning bolt. But I'm not God. God has mercy. <laughs> uh, and he finally realizes, no matter what he does, says to God, he's going to have to go and do what he has to do. Sometimes we're kind of like that, you know? So, there's a wonderful poem written about the burning bush. You've probably heard this also. It's by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. And it's this. Earth crammed with heaven. And every common bush a fire with God. God's everywhere. But only he who really sees takes off his shoes. The rest sit round and pluck blackberries. Let me read that again. Earth's crammed with heaven and Every common bush a fire with God. But only he who sees takes off his shoes. The rest sit around and pluck blackberries. So what are we going to do today? Are we going to pluck back blackberries? Or are we going to see God's sacredness in everything around us? And not complain about the lack of energy, but he believe that he's there. And he's going to see us through anything 
that happens to us in life and give us the energy that we need to battle that thing. So let's all affirm together the limitless energy of spirit flows through me. Let's do it one more time. The limitless energy of spirit flows through me. So please remain seated as we join together in hymn number 252. Thy will, O Lord, not mine, be done. Let us pray for the affirming prayer. I invite you all to relax. Relax your whole body from the shoulders down through the rest of your body. Release all the tension. Then take a deep breath. As you exhale, release all the worldly concerns. As you breathe in, take another breath. Breathe in that God of limitless energy. God of wholeness, God of love, God of limitless energy. You fill the universe with your goodness. Thank you for cramming the earth with your love. Thank you for giving us, with an, uh, giving us an unending supply of energy. Thank you for never giving up on us. We need your energy and power so that Christ can dwell in our hearts. We need to access that energy so we can manifest who you are to those around us. We live in a world with so much hostility, anger, 
and divisiveness. We need to access that limitless supply of energy in our inner being so that we do not get pulled into all that worldly violence, bitterness, and divisiveness. We affirm today that we are power, we are energy, and we can live differently in this world. And so it is. Amen. Now please stand and sing hymn number 247. Onward, ever onward.
remain standing, please, and greet one another with the phrase, I am a bundle of God's energy. I am a bundle of God's energy. like a rap song. Get down with ATP. Gonna drink your water too. <laughs> you want it? Do you need it? Okay. <laughs> Great morning. I thank you all for coming out in this chilly weather. It's really not that bad. Oh, it's good. <laughs> I'm grateful that last week or the week before I went out and got all those wood pellets, right? And I've been burning bag after bag, bag every day. I have two bags left. That will be enough to get me to Monday. I have to keep my house warm because you know who I'm married to. <laughs> so today is a great day. And I'm grateful for all of you coming out, all of you joining us on Zoom. We have really a consistent number of people who join us on Zoom. I saw Miss Ursula Day on there. She's great. She was on our call yesterday for the 12 powers. She's like the ultimate truth student. And we love her and we bless her. And I believe Reverend Pat is on the call. And we love and bless her because it's birthday Sunday. And Reverend Pat on Monday was 101. But as Reverend Pat likes to say, I'm 102 because one is behind me. <laughs> and sh you might say, what is her purpose at 101? And her purpose is to keep the high watch for us at this church. It's her prayers that she sends to each and every one of us every day. She leads a prayerful life. So she might be homebound, but that's just in our mind. Her prayers go out and out beyond at her home. And they touch each and every one of us. Just like all the grandparents here who are praying for their kids and their grandchildren. We wonder how our grandchildren are doing so well. And it's because of your prayers. You're calling them out to come up higher. And you should be calling them out to come out, if you know what I mean. I know when I was their age, I had to come out. I had to go to church. And then when I was free on my own, I did what my kids are doing, living large in Brooklyn, living large in Manhattan, until I was called out in my 30s by my wife. We're going to church. So we got to call them out because we often say, what's going to happen to this church? And what's happening to all the other unity churches? We're not calling people out. You gotta call, call them out. You gotta be the light so that they can see the light in you and they want your light. 
So I thank you for coming out. But more importantly, I thank you for calling out and praying for all those who are not here, that they will find that spirit within them and the two by four of of the Holy Spirit will hit them upside their head (laughs) and say, what am I doing? I need to go to church. I need to have a, a relationship with God. So with all that said, I ask that we stand and that we sing out the Lord's Prayer. Take a breath with me, please. And just let go. Let go of 
of everything that you brought into this sanctuary. Let nothing in the outer disturb the calm peace in your heart. Let go with me. Let go. And hold an image in your heart and mind of the miracle on 34th Street. That childlike wonder in the young girl. Nothing could stop her from her belief as she declared over and over, I believe, I believe. I believe. I believe there's only one power and one presence active in this one life. I believe all my good comes from our Father, Mother, God. I believe as I let go of all the things in the outer, I will build be filled with the strength of God within. Like Moses, who am I to do your will? And God responded, I am that I am. I am you, and you am I. Only believe, only believe, and all things are possible through Christ who strengthens us, through the Holy Spirit which teaches us all things anew. Only believe, only be still. Be still your heart and mind and let go of all things in the outer. Let it go. And allow the presence and power of God to speak in and through and as you. Not my will, but let thy will be done. Not my worldly love, but your heavenly love. Not my temporary joy in this world, but your everlasting love in heaven. And not peace as the world gives, but the perfect peace that Jesus Christ has given us the peace that we know when we know the Father and I are one. Nothing in the outer can disturb the calm peace in my heart, for I know that I know. And what I know will set me free from all the trials and tribulations of this world, for I can see clearly now I can see clearly that all that is in this world was put forth by our Father, Mother, God. All the seeds and plants and birds, all the fishes, the breath, the air that we breathe, all comes from our Father, Mother, God. I give thanks for I can see clearly now. I can see the light of God within everyone. And I can see that they are all calling for love. And it is my 
purpose here and our purpose is to be that perfect love in expression. Be that perfect love. Be that light of God. Be the voice of the Holy Spirit. Only believe. And it will be done. Only believe. And know that it is already done. Only believe. And as our prayer chest comes forward, we declare in one heart and one mind that we believe that all our prayers have been answered. God's good will and God's good goes before us and makes all the crooked paths straight. All our prayers have been answered. And we hold Burnett in our prayers that all good is coming forth into expression that her body is whole, perfect, and complete. That she is under the loving hands of God, working in and through the doctors, the nurses, her husband, Alan, our prayer ministers, and everyone in this church. We hold her in the light and we believe that she is well, she is whole, she is a beautiful child of God. And we give thanks and praise for Reverend Pat, for her steadfast prayers, her steadfast love. For as she gives, she receives and she has a great giving heart. So we bless her heart, we bless her soul, and we give thanks for all that God is, today, tomorrow, and always. And so it is, amen. Thank you, Paul. I want to say thank you to Bridget and Faith again. And uh, the teacher and Bridget. <laughs> I, I love Bridget because she's always trying to take it deeper. And that's what we're asked to do. Take our faith deeper. And I love how she brought into us about the story of our body and our, what do you call them, the tele? The things that uh, give us zeal? Tele? Tele? ATP. And what are they? Mitochondria. My, mitochondria? Every cell. And we also have those tele? Telomeres. Telomeres. Right. And the scientists tell us when those telomeres run out, we run out. But science has also proven that through meditation, you can lengthen your telomeres. Everyone thinks, no, that's the end of the line. You can lengthen your telomeres. You can live to like Moses did, to 200. You can live as long as you want to live with God. And we listen to the outer and watch all the commercials 75% of them are by the drug companies. We walk in fear. And what we fear really is absurd. What we fear is God. Our oneness with God. Because we're giving up our ego self. That's the challenge. That's the challenge. So I heard about this couple Married 40 years, 
and they were deeply in love. And the husband wanted to do something special, so he took his wife to this beautiful restaurant. Probably uh, that Italian one in, in Melbourne um, that Sarah and I go to. But they went to the restaurant, and they're having a beautiful dinner. And what appears is a fairy godmother. And the fairy godmother says, oh, I couldn't help but admire how much in love you are. And I want to grant each of you one wish. So she says to the wife, what is your wish? And the wife says, I wish that we could cruise around the world on a beautiful cruise. Poof, two tickets for a worldwide cruise. And she said to the husband, what is your wish? Thought a little bit, looked at his wife. He said, I'm sorry, dear, but I wish I was married to a woman 30 years younger. <laughs> And the wife looked at him disappointed. The fairy godmother looked at him disappointed. <laughs> and she said, as you wish. Poof. And he was 92. <laughs> <laughs> I was told not to say anything, but the fairy, godmo fairy godmother is a woman. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so our lesson this morning is entitled Making Your To-Do List. And it's inspired by Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, where Paul writes, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We can do all things when we keep God, keep Christ first in all things we do. And that includes when we write our to-do list. Yes, making a daily to-do list is a very important practice for all of us. At work, especially if you're working from home, or even if you're retired, making a daily to-do list is a very important practice. For there are many benefits of making a daily to-do list. First, it helps us prioritize our work and personal tasks that we must do each day. And it helps us organize and be, do what is the most crucial tasks that need to be accomplished first. And when we start to accom accomplish the things that are on our to-do list, it gives us a sense of satisfaction. A to-do to list can be used to improve our time management because all of our tasks are laid out before us. So we know it clearly in advance what to do. And you can more easily decide what to do after you complete each task as you move on to the next item in, on your list. You see, planning the activities you want to complete each day helps declutter our life. It helps relieve that stress within our brain that we have to hold on to all those thoughts. What do I have to do next? What do I have to do next? When we put it on paper, it takes that stress away from us. But you have to be realistic about what you want to accomplish and make sure you plan just enough for the day. Research tells us that our to-do list should ha only have one to five items. Putting too many tasks on our to-do list can have the opposite effect and ca can cause us more stress than we want. And too many tasks can become overwhelming. So one to five tasks is enough. With the proper motivation, we can accomplish all things and we can reduce the stress in our life. Having a to-do list makes it easier to organize our day and make what we want to accomplish that we can start fresh each day with a new list. And physically crossing out the items on our to-do list increases our energy and zeal because it, it gives us a sense of accomplishment. And physically, it gives us a lift from the dopamine that is released in our bodies. Each time we complete an item, we get a sense of accomplishment and we get that natural dopamine fix. 
However, the most important part of preparing our to-do list is to remember, as I said in the beginning, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. As Jesus declared in John chapter 5, verse 30, I can do nothing of myself. I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my will, but thy will be done. The will of my Father, which has sent me. For I can do nothing of myself. And that includes writing my to-do list. To -do list. You see, when we put God first on our daily to-do list, then we are guided by the wisdom of God and the Holy Spirit of, and we will know what we what we need to do, when to do what needs to be done. You see, everything will be done in perfect timing when it's driven by the Holy Spirit. For as we write it down, we should consider it already done. God has given us the power and the strength to do what is ours to do. Because we know in perfect faith with God, all things are possible. So when we write down what we want, if we write down what we want, that implies we lack. Want means it's an absence. So don't put on your to-do list what I want. You have to put on there what is good good for you and good for all your brothers. You see, so often when we create our to-do list, we create them based on our desires in the outer. And when we base our to-do list on what will bring us joy and satisfaction in the outer, more often than not, that satisfaction is fleeting. That satisfaction is only momentarily. We say, if I work hard and put in extra hours, I will be justly rewarded. And we measure our daily success by what we can get instead of by what we can give. You see, yesterday we had a class on the 12 powers, on the power of zeal and enthusiasm. And we came to know that if our zeal and enthusiasm is based on the things in the outer, it's not long lasting and it can burn us out. But when our zeal and enthusiasm is based on the things of spirit, then we have eternal zeal, as Bridget talked about. We have that eternal zeal of God within us. You see, we can hire motivational speakers like uh, Tony Robbins and all those speakers that you get on your, your Facebook posts and your uh, TikTok and Instagram. We can have them come in here and, and do a, a, a seminar for us for thousands of dollars. We could go to the stadiums where they have sold out stadiums for the whole weekend. And we could get all filled with rah, rah, rah. And what happens more th often than not, after we leave the rah, rah, we go back to what same old, same old. Because that zeal that they planted inside of us is only temporary. That zeal that many of my high school friends had when they went on Christian awakenings was only temporary because they didn't have that relationship with God. When they went back to school on Monday, they went back to the same old, same old. That zeal which filled us all after 9-11, and this church was filled to overflowing for three months, soon went back to normal. And normal is abnormal. So we can spend thousands of, of dollars on motivational speakers. But Jesus warned us to be aware of false prophets. Mm -hmm. Jesus says the only way is the Holy Spirit. The only way is if we come apart for a while and spend time in the silence. 
so that when we come apart each morning, while it's still dark, the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us through the rest of the day. And then we will know what to do, when to do, what needs to be done, because the Holy Spirit is with us. So it's important that we know when we write our to-do list, it's important that we know it's not what we're writing on there. It's why we're doing what we're doing. What's the purpose of what you're doing in life? For Jesus said in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, we are all ca called according to his perfect purpose. And you don't know what his purpose is if you're writing your to-do list based on all the things in the outer. Your perfect purpose is to be the light of the world. And if that means to be the light as a school teacher, as a clerk, as whatever you're doing, where people can recognize that energy, that zeal of the Christ within you, that's your purpose. Like the woman I was doing an audit many years ago at an old bank called Manufacturers Hanover Trust. And she was a, uh, a staff person in the real estate section. And when I interviewed her in her cubicle, it was like I entered a different world. Because all within her cubicle, tacked up in her cubicle, was the Daily Word. I didn't know anything about the Daily Word back then. I wasn't dating Sarah, but I could feel her energy. And she had a brilliant smile. And everything she, I asked, she joyfully shared with me. Well, this is what I do. This is how I do it. She didn't say, oh, here's an auditor. He's a pain in the Yahoo. She says, I'm open and receptive because I know what I do, and I do it well. And here's what I do. See, an auditor isn't there to catch you. An auditor th is there to make a process improvement, to make sure you're doing things the best way that you can. An auditor in the IRS is different. <laughs> they're there to catch you. <laughs> An auditor in your business, if they're doing their job right, is to commend you and help you do it better. So we have to be careful when we write our to-do list are we writing it because of what we want to do? Or are we writing it because we know why we're doing it? And we're called according to God's perfect purpose. You see, too often we write it, our, our to-do list, because we want to get more. We want to get more of the things in the outer. And then after 40 years, you look at all the things you got, and you got nothing. My, my boss of many years at the job I'm at right now, he was on the job for 29 years. And in three minutes, he was out of a job. They took his access away, and they said, thank you for your service, but we have no use for you anymore. That's the way of the world because they're looking at the numbers. Citibank is looking at their bottom line. They're letting go 20,000 people next, next year. I was at Manufacturers Hanover Trust. Five mergers later and many layoffs later, it's now Chase, the fifth largest bank in the world. But that company and many companies don't really have a soul. They have a bottom line. So when you're working for these companies, you have to be driven by your purpose. And that purpose will make you aware when things are not going right in your department or in the company. And you will know when you, that you know that they're going to let you go. And you will know that you are one step ahead of them because God is with you. And you know that your value is greater than what they see. 
So when you get that three-minute call, you're not disappointed. You say, thank you, God, for I will do something greater than this. I was let go many years ago from Manny Hammy when it turned into chemical. And I knew I was going to be let go. I knew it because I had circumvented my boss. He was a real pain in the Yahoo. And I circumvented him and I went above him to the boss I knew for many years. Was I right? Yes. But was I right? No. I should have dealt with him directly. I should have had the, the, the conference one-to-one -one saying, I don't like what you're doing. So a couple years later, she's gone, and he's still there. And there was a, a legal look into one of my audits because they let someone go, and he was suing the bank. And sure enough, I did what was right but he was there to throw me under the bus. So I knew I was gonna be let go, but my attitude was right because when I went in for that three minute call, one to one, I said, thank you for everything you've done for me. And I'm eager to do something elsewhere. And the boss was taken back. She's like, I hope everybody who comes in here is like you. And I got a job like that with Sumitomo. And I've been there for a long time. So you always have to know what you do, not so much what you're doing, but why you're doing. And your why has to come forth in your to-do list. And it will only come forth when you take time to be still, to come apart each morning and know what is your purpose with God. It's not in getting. For Jesus said in Mark 8, 35, verse 37, he said, if all the riches you get and you don't get me, then you got nothing. If everything, you, if you lose your life and you lose it for me, you get everything. Just like when he was tempted on the mountain during 40 days, the devil said, if you prostrate yourself before you, before me, I will give you all the riches of the world. And what did Jesus say? Might be a little rude, but he said, shut the front door. He said, shut up, get behind me. And we have to do the same. When we're tempted by all the shiny things in the outer when what we really want in our purpose is the inner strength and light of God so that we can share that with each and every one of us, so that we can share it in prayer for our kids, our grandkids, so that we may lift them up so that we're all lifted up together. So this morning, I ask you to consider writing your to-do list each and every day, but not as in the outer, but as in the inner, as the Holy Spirit in, informs you. And I've given within, I've placed in each of our daily uh, or our uh, bulletins, order of service, is a to-do list. It's a reminder to put God first in our daily practice. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all the blessings will be handed out to us. It's like we, we know, we often say, today is a day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Psalm 118. But we stop there. You have to go on beyond there. Where the psalmist declared, I beseech thee, my Lord, I beseech thee to bless me with my prosperity. You see, your prosperity comes from God, not from the things in the outer. And we have to believe 
that the good in our lives always comes from God. And when we write our to-do list, we're writing it because we know through Christ, I can do all things for he strengthens me. Through Christ, I am made new every day. Through the Christ, I am blessed beyond blessing. And so it is. Amen. Amen. And with that said, we have a little change in the order of service. Willie was ahead of us. He got the news. He put it up on there. <laughs> Thank you, Willie. We're, hi we're singing hymn number 101. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you. So now it's time that we give our thanks. Thanks for all the good in our lives and all the good that we have to share with this ministry. For we know this ministry is built and sustained by your free love offerings. So I invite you to hold that love offering upon your heart and declare with me divine love through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Last week was payday, so. <laughs> oh. Who's this? Poor Red. Good afternoon, everyone. Here are the announcements. The upcoming discussion book, How I Use Truth by Emily Cady, will be available in the book room on February 4th. Today is birthday and fellowship Sunday. Thursday, February 1st at 11 a.m., the book discussion group selection is The First Ladies by Marie Benedict and Victoria Christopher Murray. All are welcome. The ID and the passcodes are on the back of your bulletin. 
Sunday, February 4th, after service is the annual business meeting. Copies of the 2023 annual business meeting minutes and the 2023 monthly log are in the activity center as well as on our website in the book room section. Also on the website is a copy of the UCC bylaws and the proposed amendments, and these will be discussed at the annual meeting as well. February 12th through March 16th is the next online prayer chaplain training workshop. For more information and to register, go to jroyce at lightandloveministries.org or call the number that's on the back of your bulletin. And finally, the giving statements have been emailed or mailed to you. If there are any questions, please contact office at unityvalleystream.net or pick up a discrepancy form in the book room. That's all for today. Thank you so much for listening and have a good Sunday. Thank you, Paulette. And I want to thank everyone who came out for ye yesterday's uh, Zoom call on the 12 powers. Um, it was a very good exchange. I want to thank Joan and um, Enid for really guiding that, that class uh, as we did the 12 power meditation. And if you haven't joined us yet, you still can join us. We have two more sessions. And I encourage you to get that book if you can, the 12 power meditation book by Charles Roth. It's out of print, but you can get it at thriftbooks.com usually. And what else do I want to thank? I just thank you. Hmm. A blanket thank you. If I forgot somebody like they do at the Oscars, thank you, Mommy. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> I thank you all. And with that said, let us stand. Oh, no, we don't stand yet. We don't stand. We can bless our love offerings. And we'll have our birthday Sunday. giver we say thank you thank you from the bottom of our heart but most of all we say thank you God for we know all good gifts come from God and we are grateful for all that you have given us in Jesus name we say amen, amen. and now it's time for birthday Sunday but as I stand here in my socks I want to tell Bridget <laughs> and tell you that you know when you're barefoot it's grounding. So even if it's winter time and you can get out there barefoot, you're helping your body. You're grounding yourself. I even have grounding mats, uh, uh, linens on my, on my bed. But enough about me. Anyone born in the month of January? There's one, woohoo! Stop growing. <laughs> Two. It's my brother Richard. Anyone on Zoom? Reverend Pat, we know. Anybody else? Watch out. <laughs> Their telomeres are very long. <laughs> so let us bless our birthday children. Stand up. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, you're wonderful. Happy birthday to you. God is blessing you now. God is blessing.
wish you a happy birthday and please join us in the activity center for some sugar and some fellowship. Thank you. And now the children can come forward and we'll close out the service, which never ends. Let us affirm the truth of our being. The light of God surround us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us, for I am power. The presence of God watches over us, for I am presence. For wherever we are, God is and all is well. For I am divine. And as you leave this place and you go out and write your to-do list to God, remember that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so it is. Amen. Amen. If you need another to-do list, they're out on the North X. You can get a hug. You can give a hug. And you can join us for prayer. Thank you for all.